To master your emotions, try this powerful Zen solution. We know mastering emotion is important and not doing so can be expensive. Still, it's easy for us to be swept away by strong emotions and do silly things. We may say or do things we regret later, hurt people we care about, or make poor decisions that result in missed opportunities or financial losses. It can also lead to health issues such as chronic stress and anxiety. Having worked with thousands of individuals to resolve conflicts and overcome emotional challenges, I have gained some helpful insight into emotional control. In the process, I've experimented with several methods, some more successful than others. The Zen approach, which I'm going to explain in a while, focuses on acceptance. It has proven to be the most effective among them. However, we must examine the other few approaches first so that we can see the solution in context. So let's move on. In addition to the Zen method, the other methods that I've experimented with include suppression, release, and reframing. One of the most common responses to emotions is suppression. Even when you are angry, you keep quiet as if nothing has happened. While suppression isn't the best way to master emotions, it is necessary and has come to my rescue many times, especially when things sudden happen and catch me unprepared. Instead of bursting into emotions, I suppress the feelings. But clearly, suppression is not the best option. Let's face it, suppressing emotions doesn't make the problems disappear. You may have pushed them down, but they can manifest in other ways. It can also lead to health problems such as chronic stress or even depression. There can also be an emotional disconnect where you lose touch with your genuine feelings. Worse, it can build tension in you like a pressure cooker, and when emotions turn into explosive outbursts, they can be devastating. So I need a healthy approach to mastering emotions. Another common response to emotions is to find healthy outlets to release them. In addition to punching a bag or waving a fist, there are several other ways to do this. They include Confide in a trusted friend, journal the experience, take up creative arts such as painting, exercise such as jogging, spend time in nature, where it can be as simple as taking a stroll in the garden, practice relaxation such as meditation. These activities help us safely reduce pressure and clarify the situation more. The best way to release emotions depends on your experience and preferences. Experiment with um, each method to find what works best for you. Still, these methods have a problem. They are reactive. If emotion is an enemy, it's like allowing an enemy to enter into your territory before chasing them out. So the question is, why do you let the enemy enter in the first place? I need a better solution to prevent emotions from entering my world in the first instance. Here comes another popular solution, reframing my mind. Our thoughts shape our emotions, so if you can effectively control your thoughts, you can avoid negative emotions. Think of our emotions as downstream from our thoughts. Things happen, we interpret them through our thoughts, and the thoughts trigger emotional responses. A change of thought can change how we interpret events and interrupt the cycle before emotions take over. So to prevent me from feeling angry about negative comments, for example, I change my perspective on feedback. Instead of resisting feedback, I embrace it, good or bad. If the criticism seems genuine, I use it as a chance to learn and improve. 
If it is untrue, I use it to test my tolerance. By staying calm and composed, I cultivate inner strength and resilience. Either way, it helps me grow to become the best version of myself. Reframing is a powerful tool, but it has drawbacks. It can feel like putting a bandaid on a broken leg. I can shift my perspective, but the underlying issue might still be there. Furthermore, when reframing my thoughts, I'm trying to interpret the situation in a way that I think is desirable. But what I believe is desirable may not be the most appropriate. For example, when feeling overwhelmed with work, I might tell myself it is a chance to prove my worth and push even harder. However, this can backfire if I'm not selective about taking on new tasks. I should avoid distorting the situation with my assumptions to manage my emotions effectively. This is where the Zen solution comes in helpful. I would call the approach emptying your boat, a reference to a fable by the ancient Chinese philosopher Zhuangzi. This Zen approach goes beyond reframing. It allows me a space to observe my thoughts instead of just changing the label. Imagine you are crossing a river, an empty boat bumps into yours. What will you do? The boat is empty, so you adjust your course. You don't get angry. But what if there is a person in that boat? I'm not surprised you will start shouting. If your shout is not heard, you shout again and again, right? Why is your behavior so different when there is someone in the boat? This is because you judge before you respond. If you can let go of the judgment, there will be less anger, smoother interactions, and a flow of life. So, if you want to master your emotions, don't even allow any trigger to work. Be as calm as an empty boat. When anything happens, stay detached. Don't judge. Accept whatever happens as an empty boat and observe your thoughts. Non-judgment allows a buffer between what has happened and your response so that you can observe the situation from a distance. You are less likely to be swept away by emotions. It unlocks a deeper understanding of yourself and the situation. It helps you nurture emotional resilience from the inside out. Like Zhuangzi says, if you can empty your own boat when crossing the river of the world, no one will oppose you, no one will seek to harm you. This is indeed a powerful solution. But <laughs> It is not easy to implement. It requires you to be in a state of calmness, which is not something that most people can have immediately. For me, I'm far from its mastery. Somehow, emotions will creep in. While I see the Zen solution as the ultimate, I continue searching for something in between to fill the gap. Then I found a method known as not about me. Now, eventually, I want to be an empty boat. And this method, not about me, would take me there. It helps me to overcome a critical hurdle, the ego. One of the biggest reasons we get emotional is our ego. We respond emotionally when our ego is hurt. So if you can tone down your ego, you are less defensive and in better control of your emotions. A way to deal with it is to tell yourself, it's not about me. Don't take things personally. Even if someone seems to criticize you, instead of automatically reacting, tell yourself, it's not about me. They are just airing their opinions. Think of it as if you were a third party listening to a conversation between two other people. This creates a mental buffer. You gain precious space to listen and process before reacting. Curiosity replaces emotional outbursts, leading to more thoughtful responses. Give it a try. This simple shift 
can be surprisingly effective in a wide range of situations.